Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the Man Whitney U test. Man Whitney U test is a non parametric equivalent of the two sample t test with independent samples. Let's get started. When do we perform a Man Whitney U test? A Man Whitney U test is performed when we want to compare the distributions of two independent groups or samples to determine if they have different population medians. So it's a test of medians, not a test of means. What are the assumptions involved in the Man Whitney U test? The first two assumptions are very common to almost all the tests that we have seen so far. The sample should have been collected randomly and there should be an independence in the observations within a group and independence of the observations between the group. So there is no connection between an observed value within a group or between two groups that we are considering or two samples that we are considering. The third assumption here, however, is a little interesting one, which says the population distributions have the same shape. Now, this assumption is important because it is because of this assumption that we are able to call it a test of medians. So this is a very important assumption when you are performing a man with knee test. Let's dive into a problem and understand it a little better. A manufacturing company is evaluating two different production processes, process A and process B. The company wants to determine if process B is producing significantly different outcomes compared to process A. Observe that the problem statement doesn't say that A is greater than B or B is greater than A. The problem statement only says, are they different? So this is going to be a two-tailed test. Further moving on, to investigate this, the company collects data on a specific quality metric from two groups of randomly selected products. Group one represents products manufactured using process A, and group two represents the products manufactured using process B. Based on the data provided, conduct an appropriate test at 5% level of significance. So the moment we finish stating this problem, we understand that we are talking about two samples which have different origins. Process A has nothing to do with process B. They are independent. What else is provided to us? It is clear that the level of significance is 5% which means the confidence of this test will be 95%, one minus alpha. Moving on to the hypothesis. The null hypothesis will be that median of group one is equal to the median of group two. There is no difference. And the alternative hypothesis would be that the median of group one and group two are not the same. They're not equal. Whether they are greater or lesser, that's a separate piece, but they're not same as what we are saying. Now, this has a slightly different test statistic. And I will just explain these terms to you. I will also give you a practical demonstration so that it gets easier. So the test statistic in this case is denoted by U, which is minimum of U1 and U2. What is U1? U1 is the statistic that you will calculate using the first sample. Now, the terms to observe here are R1, which is a sum of ranks of group one, and N1, which is the sample size of group one. Similarly, you have a calculation for the second sample, which will have R2, which is the sum of ranks of group two, and N2, which is the sample size of group two. As you can observe, it is not mandatory that the sample sizes in case of a man with knee U test will be equal. They can be different as well. And I will quickly explain step-by-step step how to go about calculating these. Let's first have a look at the data. So here we go. We have two samples. First sample is coming from process A, and the second sample is an output of the production process B. This is how our raw data is. We are checking if the median of the population from where this sample has been collected is comparable to the median of the population from where the second sample has been collected. Now let's understand the step-by-step -step process. Step one is to combine the data from both groups into a single data set. Let's see how do we do that. So here we go. Instead of looking at the data in two separate columns, we have to combine the data which is also kind of stacking the data one on top of the other. So we have group one here, and these are the observations that you can see here. And we have group two thereafter, and these are the observations from group two. This is step one. Let's see what's step two. Step two says rank all the observations in the combined data set, assigning a rank based on their order. Ties are handled by assigning the average rank. Now this is a portion that we have to be a little careful about, and that's why I've marked it in red so that we can pay attention to it when we are talking about it. We have to do a ranking, but we have to handle the ties or the common values in a special way. So first of all, before we start ranking, it will always be easier to do any ranking process if we are able to sort the data. Let's sort the data in an ascending order. So now the data is sorted and it's, you can see all mixed up. 
With the color coding, of course, we can identify where the group is, but otherwise it's all mixed up. You have group one and then group two and so on and so forth. Now we have to do a ranking, right? So let me write a column for rank and the smallest value will be given the rank one, but we have a tie. The next value is also one. So this is what we mean by ties. So this is one and this would have been two, but we have to take an average of these two values and we have to place this average at both the places. So one plus two is three, three divided by two is 1.5. We are going to put 1.5 at both the places. There is no way that we can give the second 11 a better rank compared to the first 11. So this is how we go about giving the ranks. Next is once again, we have a couple of ties here, but what would be the ranks if this was not a tie? So we've already ranked two places. This would have been three, four, and five. Three, four, and five. But since there is a tie, we have to take an average of these three numbers. And the average of three, four, and five, this adds up to 12. 12 divided by three, the count, this is four. So we have to replace all these values with four. Next, we don't have a tie here. 15 is a unique value. Continue to count how many positions, how many places you've ranked. and give the number in succession. So we've already ranked five places. We will say this is going to be the sixth position. Once again, for 16, we have three ties. So this is going to be seven, eight, and nine. But since there is a tie, we are going to take an average here. Seven plus eight is 15, 15 plus nine is 24, 24 by three is eight. So we are going to replace all these with eight. 17 is a unique value. How many places have we ranked so far? We have ranked nine places. We are going to give it the 10th rank. 18 is again a unique value. We are going to rank it 11. 19 is again a unique value. We are going to rank it as 12. Once again, we have a couple of ties, 20. But how many places have we ranked so far? We have already ranked 12 places. So we can say this is going to be 13, 14, and 15. And what is the average of these three? You can get that it is going to be 14. So we'll put 14 everywhere here. And finally, we have a tie one more time. These values are all 25. How are you going to resolve this? We have to just keep in mind how many places have we ranked so far? We've already ranked 15 places. So we are going to place 16, 17, and 18. Initially, we are ranking it the way we will rank as if there was no tie. But since there is a tie, we are going to take an average, and this is going to be 17. So we're going to put 17 everywhere, 17 again. All right, so here are the ranks that we have obtained upon doing this method of ranking. There's actually an easier way in Excel to do the ranking. And let me just show you quickly. This is actually a function called rank.avg. This actually follows the same average ranking method. You need to point to the cell where you're taking the value from, and then you have to give the entire reference range. And then you have to mention whether you want to do it in an ascending or a descending order. So for ascending order, you have to put one here. You can see that zero is descending and one is ascending. So I'm putting a one because we want it in ascending order. We got this value. One thing that we want to be careful about is if we are copying this formula across, we should fix the reference range. It can be done by placing these dollar signs here. So I've done that. Now the reference range is this entire data. And as we scroll, we will keep on pointing to different values. Let's just simply go ahead and extend this for the entire data. You can see this is giving us the exact same ranking that we manually calculated. Now I could have shown you the function first to begin with, but it is important to understand the concepts. Otherwise the function would remain a mystery for you. That's why I decided to do it manually first. The step three is to calculate the sum of ranks for each group separately. The sum of ranks for group one is denoted by R1, and the sum of ranks for group two is being denoted as R2. Once we have these R1 and R2 values, we can compute U1 and U2. And once we get to know U1 and U2, that takes us to our step four, which says compute the U statistic using the formula minimum of U1 and U2. So now that we have these ranks available, we're just going to add them by each group. We need separate sum total of ranks for each group. These are called R1 and R2 values. So 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3. 3 plus 6 here, because we're only talking about group 1, is 9. 9 plus 8 here, which is 17. 17 plus 12 is going to be 29. 29 plus this number is 42. 
3 times 14. So 29 plus 42 is going to be 71. R1 is 71. We've written it here. What about R2? We have to add the values from group two. So this is four plus four plus four. This is going to be 12. 12 plus 16, which is 28. 28 plus 10, 38 plus 11, which is 49. And 49 plus 51, this is going to be, 49 plus 51 is 100. So R2 is 100. We've just done a sum total for both the groups separately. Now we need these numbers to compute U1 and U2. Let's quickly refresh what the values for U1 and U2 were. Okay, so value of U1 is R1 minus N1 multiplied by N1 plus one by two. N1 is nothing but the sample size. For group one, the sample size in our case was eight and for group two, it was 10. So we just have to put these values. Since we know R1, we already know the sample size. We can quickly calculate U1 and U2 and our test statistic is finally going to be the minimum of the two. Let's do that. So U1 is going to be R1 minus N1, which is nothing but eight, multiplied by N1 plus one, which is going to be nine. And we have to divide it by two. So U1 is 35. And likewise, U2 is going to be R2, which is 100 minus N2. What is the size of the second sample? We have 10 observations there, multiplied by N2 plus one. So this is going to be 11. And we are going to divide it by two. This number comes to 45. Which one is smaller? Of course. U1 is smaller. So our test statistic U in this case becomes 35. This is what we've calculated. Now that we found the test statistic, we can compare it with a critical value. And then using the decision rule, we can decide whether we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's see how do we find the critical value now. So this is the man with me U table. You always find it at the back of the statistic books and you can easily search it, you will find it online. Okay, there'll be separate tables for one tail and two tail tests. Since our problem statement was relative to a two tail test, that's what we are referring to. How do we read this? It is very straightforward. You just have to locate N1 and N2 values here. In our case, N1 was eight observations in the first sample and N2 was 10 observations in the second sample. So you just have to locate where these two values meet, something like this. So we have eight observations for the first sample and 10 observations for the second sample. The critical value, the critical U value in our case would be 17. Now, what is the decision rule? How do we see this against the test statistic that we computed? So our test statistic was 35 and the critical value is 17. How do we make a decision? Decision rule is simple. If the calculated U statistic is less than or equal to the critical value, reject the null hypothesis. Calculated U statistic in our case was 35 and the critical value is 17. So this is not the scenario. We are referring to the second scenario. If the calculated U statistic, which is 35, is greater than the critical value, which is 17, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So our conclusion would be that with this given data, at 95% confidence using the man with U test, we can conclude that we fail to reject the null hypothesis which means the two groups seem to have comparable medians. Let's just quickly see how do we perform the same test in Python. So in order to perform this test in Python, we are importing the library called pandas because we're going to read some data here, which is the data related to the two samples. And the man with me U test is already available in the library called SciPy. So we are going to call this from the SciPy stats and we are just executing this. Now I have kept the data in the separate CSV file. The same data I showed you is available in the CSV file. And I'm going to just read this using pandas. This is a data frame. And here we go. I can show you this entire data because it's a small sample. You can see we have zero to seven. That is eight in count. The first sample is of size eight and two extra values for the second sample, which is a sample size of 10. You see two nans here. These basically represent not a number. So when you have a blank cell in pandas, it begins to call it as not a number or nan. Now we are going to straight away call the man with me u, where we have to give our sample inputs. So the first input is our first sample. It refers to the same data frame and the column title group one. And the second sample is of course title group two. There is a specific input you would need when you do not have equal sample sizes. How to deal with not a number scenarios. 
So we are saying omit. Omit means ignore these values and do your computations. And in Python, we already have a provision to exactly mention the type of hypothesis we are performing. So we are already mentioning it as two-sided, which is how our scenario was. And when I run this, you can see this computes the test statistic, which is the same as what we manually computed sometime back in Excel. And in fact, it's also giving us a p-value, which is 0.686. Now you can imagine 0.68 is much greater compared to 0 0.05. So as per this rule as well, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So the conclusion is one and the same. We don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Now, if we have large samples, then there is a possibility that we can do an approximation to a normal distribution. So the calculation of U, which is the main thing in all of man whitney tests, whether it's a small sample or a large sample, is something that remains unchanged. The only change is if you have large samples, that is the sample sizes are greater than 10, then you can use this approach. You will calculate U exactly the same way, but you can also calculate the mean of the U statistic and standard error. And these are the formulae. If you see, these equations only use the sample sizes to compute the mean and standard error. So using this, you can calculate a Z statistic. Once you compute the Z test statistic, depending on the level of significance, you can look for the critical value, compare your test statistic with the critical value, and make your decision exactly the way we did in case of Z tests. So I'm not doing that example here, but I hope you get the idea. The main thing in this entire piece was how do we compute this man Whitney U statistic? This is something that we have seen very clearly. Hope you get clarity through this explanation. Thank you.